The boundary layer is one of the most important concepts in fluid mechanics. Um, let me explain it by imagining that we have a fluid above a plate, so starting with a very simple configuration, and then that we uh, sort of put a trace of dye inside the fluid running uh, from top to bottom, and then take the plate and start to move it at some velocity v from right to left. Now, after a little bit of time, the fluid that's touching the plate will move with the plate by the no-slip condition, so it will have moved to there. The fluid just next door, well, some of the momentum will have diffused, so some of the velocity will have diffused to that fluid next door, and it will be moving a little bit from right to left, and so it goes on. And if you plot out where the die has got to, after a little bit of time, it will have moved to there. After a little bit more time, the die will have moved a little bit further downstream, and it will have affected a bit more of the rest of the fluid. And so, a little bit later on, it looks like this. And we can see clearly that we have a bit of fluid here that has been unaffected by the boundary. And a bit of fluid underneath, next to the boundary, that has been affected by the boundary. And that, quite simply, is the definition of a boundary layer. It's the layers of fluid that have been affected by the boundary, this bit here. An equivalent way of defining it is that in the part unaffected by the boundary, so outside the boundary layer, here, the viscous terms in equations of motion are negligible. And often we say, uh, as a measure of that, we say that they're less than 1% of uh, the other terms, the pressure terms and the inertial terms. Um, whereas in the boundary layer, the viscous terms in the equations of motion are appreciable. By that I mean not negligible. Now, what I want to do is draw the diagram I've just drawn, but another different aspect of it. Here I'm going to plot the velocity profile of the fluid a certain time after we started moving the bottom boundary. Now we know that the fluid at the bottom boundary will be at velocity big V, and we know that as we go up, it'll be moving closer and closer to zero until eventually, at this point here, at the edge of the boundary layer, it, uh, where the, velo the velocity is zero, which is the initial velocity of the fluid. So if I draw in the velocity vectors, they'll look like this. And now let's change our frame of reference so that we're moving with the wall at velocity v. In other words, so that the fluid that's stationary will be moving from left to right at velocity v, and then redraw this diagram. Essentially all that's happened here is that this axis here has shifted by an amount v to here, and so that's drawn on the right. And now the velocity profile is this. At the wall there's obviously zero velocity. Um, up at the top, outside the boundary layer, the velocity is equal to big V, and in between it's just exactly the same profile as before, but with the axis shifted. So nothing's changed to this profile. It looks something like that. And here are the velocity arrows. And of course, the two red lines there are meant to have been drawn at exactly the same shape. Now, some people ask, why is this shape not linear or parabolic? Um, and that's simply because the boundary condition at the top here is not the same as the boundary condition for Couette flow or Poisson flow when we had a, a flat wall. Let me talk a little bit about those boundary conditions. When we've got a boundary layer, um, looking at the boundary conditions, if you like, at the top of the boundary layer, um, basically you have to have that the velocity in the x direction is equal to big V, the velocity of the external fluid. But you also need to have, and these are new boundary conditions, um, dvx by dy is equal to zero, d2vx by dy squared is equal to zero, and so on. Now, 
these last boundary conditions don't exist in the case of Coet flow or Poisson flow. Um, the, they just have the boundary condition that there must be no slip at the surface. And so because the boundary conditions are different, we get a different flow solution for a boundary layer uh, compared with Coet flow and Poisson flow. And of course another very important difference between the two is that in the boundary layer that we've shown here, where we started the ball moving at a certain time zero and watched how it advanced, uh, the edge of the boundary is moving up the fluid. Um, in other words, it's not steady. So whereas for Couette and Poisson flow, I'll put them C plus P, we had the condition that d by dt of anything is equal to zero, uh, whatever that thing is, um, because it's steady flow, in this case, uh, in this particular example I've shown here, it's an unsteady flow in that it's evolving with time. So there's another difference that explains the different velocity profiles. Um, it's quite fun, though, to consider a case, a sort of hybrid between the two. Um, imagine this situation where you've got a plate at the top that's stationary, a plate underneath that begins to move uh, at time t equals zero, at velocity big uh, speed big v, um, and let's imagine what the velocity profile will look like. Um, to start off with, then, at time t equals zero, the velocity profile will look like that. Then, suddenly, at time just after t equals zero, the bottom bit of fluid will be moving at velocity v, but that effect won't have diffused very far into the fluid yet. So the boundary layer will be very much present. Um, the boundary layer is, of course, that bit there, the boundary layer on the bottom plate. Uh, the boundary layer of the top plate doesn't really exist because the top plate is still, and the fluid next to it is still as well. Um, and then as time goes on, uh, we'll find this effect being sort of, you can think of it as momentum diffusing all the way up through the fluid, but you will tend towards, as the boundary layer grows towards the top plate, you'll tend towards Couet flow. So it's a kind of hybrid case, this, between a boundary layer flow uh, and a Couet flow. It's not quite a boundary layer flow because the, um, the situation is confined, so when the boundary layer makes it to the top, it sort of gets stuck, um, and then it's only Couet flow in the limit of long time uh, when we eventually form this velocity profile here.